Same type of problem, same circular hat. So we're going to learn how to solve these circular motion problems because they can be difficult. Here's your first one. Please get a calculator, work along with this. Will you please pause it, give it a think, and see if you can find the answer to part A of this circular motion problem. This first part, or part A, actually has nothing to do with circular motion and is all about conservation of energy right here. With the start being at the top, and then it's going to be all the way 120 meters down at the bottom at point A. So see what you can do about solving that conservation of energy problem. Hopefully you're now familiar with the conservation of energy, and you see that I assumed the ball had all gravitational potential, then down at the bottom at A it was all kinetic energy, and then I solved for V sub A. Now for the next part, we want to find the reaction force up here at the top of the loop at B you have to know how fast it's going. So once again, use conservation energy. You can go from the start to this level here if you like to find that uh, new energy, if you will. You could have done this multiple ways, but what I did was I made now at B, I made that my zero point of gravitational potential energy and said that the ball was only 60 meters up above there. and that's how I got this velocity for of 35 meters per second at B. Now, to find this reaction force, it helps to draw a good free body diagram. So if you haven't, pause it and attempt to do that right now. At point B, just like anywhere on Earth, you've got weight going down like this. Now, you've also got a normal force from the track that seems kind of crazy, but the normal force is actually pressing down on it because that's keeping it from flying upwards. So we have a normal force, crazily enough, that's probably not as big as weight, that is pressing down on it. Now it's in circular motion, and so acceleration always has to be towards the center, which in this case is down, and that's it. That's our free body diagram. So now we set up Newton's second law, and we say that, and we're going to call down to be the positive direction, because everything's happening down, and we're going to say normal force plus mg is going to equal the mass times our acceleration. And I want to rearrange to solve for the normal force. For acceleration, I'm going to plug in the v squared over r, and I'm going to move over my mg. Now it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. And hopefully you can follow how I plugged in the mass, which once you add in the people, turned it to be 540 and plugged in my velocity and the radius of the circle and then the weight turned out to be the 540 kgs times 10 and I went over here and I ended up with this 16,000 newtons. Here's a banked turn problem, a classic physics circular motion problem that can be quite difficult. Now, help it will help if you can see a picture. This car is from the t bird's eye view. It's going around in a circle and we're going to say that's part of circular motion as it goes along here. Now if you think of it from, let's say you're viewing the car from the back, here's the license plate here, and then you can see the tires on the road. And if it's going in a circle, that acceleration has to be towards the center of the circle, which would be straight horizontal. There is no up and down motion, as I said, it's not sliding up the curve or down the curve. And the first thing you want to do is see if you can draw a good free body diagram. So pause it, read the problem closely, try and do a free body diagram from the side of the car. As always, if you cannot draw a proper free body diagram of a situation, you probably will not be understanding the situation very well, and you'll probably get whatever problem wrong you're trying to do. Now, for this situation, let's say that I drew some axes here with this one here representing the incline of the plane. With any free, most anything, I'm going to start with the most obvious force, and that is mg, the force of weight. Uh, they said there's no friction that's uh, needed to keep it on the road. So we look at the next most obvious force, and that's normal, which is now tilted because the road is tilted. Now that is not, well, we're not sure what that force is going to be, so let me not worry about its size. But let me draw it in there and label that as n. Maybe I'll make it a little bit bigger, actually. Now, uh, if there's no friction, that's it. That's all the forces that there are. 
Now, I know that there's no acceleration in the vertical, so my vertical forces must cancel out. So what that means is the normal force here, the vertical normal force, must be the vertical component, let's call that n sub y, must exactly equal mg because they cancel out. Now I also have a n sub x, a horizontal component that is unbalanced, and that is what's causing my acceleration to the left. Now I've helped you out this far. If you haven't solved it yet, pause it. See if you can use these hints to take you the rest of the way. Now you should know that this angle is theta, just as this angle is theta. And if we know there's no vertical acceleration, this y component of normal has to equal weight. And so I can make this a little bit uh, better by saying n times the cosine of theta, because that's the adjacent leg of our right triangle here, is going to equal to mg. I can't do much else with that. And then my centripetal force is the component of the normal force, which I am going to call n sub x, which can also be thought of as n sine theta equals m a dx. Now, my goal is to find uh, what the angle is that makes this all possible. I don't know, unfortunately, what the acceleration is yet, though. So I got to back up a little bit. And I need to find that acceleration. Boom! That acceleration should now be easy because you know to use v squared over r, and with your r being the radius of the circle that he's turning in, and then you get this acceleration. Now you just need to do some clever algebra. And what we can say, if we want to eliminate some of these variables that we don't like, we don't know what mass is. We don't know what the normal force is. So if we say n sine theta equals m a sub x, and we divide this whole situation by the other equation, just like this, ho oh, ho, this is clever. Ba boom, ba boom, mass goes away. Wow, goodbye. Normal force, it's gone. And we end up with this crazy situation of tangent of the angle equals the acceleration over g. How clever is that? Don't answer. It's really clever. And then we just do a solve of this situation. And that is going to give us an angle, I believe, of about 35 degrees. There you have it. Woo!